Welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today we are going to learn what it means to have risky biznatch, okay? Because that's a thing now. So that's really fun. Let's let's look here. But I did just read this article about how important it is for you to rate this show. The article was called something stupid, and I think it had something to do with Disneyland. So it really isn't important to what we're talking about here. But I think it is very important that you rate this show with five stars. You want to know why? Because five stars is better than four. So when you go over to iTunes and you look at how you can rate this show, you, you just pick five of the stars. You pick a, a star for every finger on your hand, including your thumb. Okay, so I don't want to get into any of this a thumbs not a finger bullshit. Okay, this is about stars. And this is about you doing the right fucking thing and not being a petty bitch. Okay, so now that we're all clear on that, we can move on to bigger and better things. Which would be maybe even leaving a review. For those of you who were so offended that... I was saying things like critics are dead and the art of critique is over. Why don't you show how much critiquing and leaving reviews and things like that matter to you by telling the world how important this fucking podcast is? Because I know it's important. You know it's important. But for those people who are just like meandering through iTunes trying to find something to listen to, you got to reach out and grab those people. You got to grab them by the goozle and say, friend, sir or ma'am, this is an important show that you need to be listening to. Why? Because without this, you will die an early and painful death. Now again, I've said this before, I am not a doctor. I do not know how these things work, but I do know that when I say things in ridiculous absolutes that they're probably always true. And whenever you say things like probably and always right next to each other, you know that that's that's the shit right there. So, ah, what a fucking wonderful world we have been traveling through. Listen to me run the old liquor. All right, a couple things too, real quick. I think I figured out a better way to do this show, which probably sounds shocking to all of you. But what I think I'm going to do, instead of trying to force certain topics in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an episode which is based on a topic that I talk about. And then the next episode will be an episode where um, I'm answering questions because there are tons of questions. Um, I didn't realize how many questions I was getting until I realized how many questions I was not answering. And then um, I would start putting those off and putting them off and um, realize that I had like kind of a plethora of things sitting around. So at least for the near future, since I'm doing two episodes a week, I figured one would just be shooting the shit and one would be answering questions. And today, folks, you have fallen in a day where I'm just shooting the shit. But it's good shit to shoot, so hopefully you're all cocked and loaded and ready to go. Cocked and loaded or loaded and cocked? Eh, probably loaded and cocked, but cocked and loaded sounds better. All right, so one of the things that you need to be doing um, is either joining up on Patreon just because you love me or going over to the tubes on YouTube and joining my channel, which is called Matt Wall Poetry and Ampersand. Okay. And if you click join on that, you're going to have a couple options. One is going to be the thank you crew. And when you join the thank you crew, you are just telling me, Matt Wall, thank you. Thank you for being awesome, and thank you for showing me the way. And I will, in turn, say, you are welcome. Go forth, my friend. You're doing it. If you join the Anarchy crew, 
you get over a hundred videos of lessons and workshops with me, plus weekly live streams that are members only, plus daily writing prompts, plus inclusion on Poetic Anarchy and Anarchy Crew projects like Poetic Anarchy anthologies, like Project Broadside, like the zine that's coming soon that we're going to be talking about shortly here. So all sorts of fun shit. So you could do that. And then for the biggest of all swinging dicks, you could join the chat book of the month club where you get everything I've talked about, but you also get all of my shit sent to your place of residence so you can read it as it comes out. And you will always get the lowest numbers of whatever run that is. So this month's chapbook, which um, I will just tell you, it's called Off the Grid. The people who are in the chapbook of the month club get the first numbers of those. Okay? So just, just know that you are getting the cream of the crop. Okay? So with that said, anyone from the thank you crew and higher, so basically anyone who joins, will get to see video versions of this podcast where you can see me right now wearing a ballet tutu covered with a nice silk robe. Yes, it was made from 80 million silkworms. I'm wearing a beautiful little hat that I bought in moscow one day when it was really cold and i'm also wearing platform boots that have goldfish in the heels but you would not know that if you are just listening to this podcast in order to see these things you need to go over to the tubes hit the join select a tier get in on that so you can see all of this in all of its glory while I tell you things that edify your mind and your soul. Okay? Okay, are, are, we, are we clear on all this now? Good. Because now, I need to do the motherfucking shoutouts. Yes, the shout-out. So first, we are going to say a big thank you to those on Patreon who just love to love me, and I love that they love me back. Okay. So a big thank you to Michael, to Deborah, to Cedar, to Harry. Thank you guys so much for your support. I appreciate it. And then for the thank you crew, we got JH, we got Britt, we got Patrick, we got AM. And you know what? Speaking of people who were in the thank you crew and who did the right thing, even righter than before, and up that motherfucking game... Okay, I want to give a big fucking thank you to the fucking Anarchy Crew's newest member, Alan. Thank you for upping and going upper and higher than you did before. That's fucking amazing, brother. Thank you so much for that. And I also want to give a big thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim, to Lisa, to Josh, to Jessica, to Shaylin, to Caitlin, and then a big motherfucking thank you to the number one chappy, SDG. And I also want to give another thank you to Ink. So there you go. Those are the fucking shout outs. And if you listening to this did not hear your name, that's because you're a cheap ass motherfucker who like other people to pay for your fucking entertainment. Quit being a bitch, do the right thing, go over, join, put your money down because you know that what you get here is fucking worth it. Don't be a bitch. All right. I'm washing my hands of that now. I felt, I felt like I was getting a little too angry there, a little too much. But the people in the Anarchy crew, people in the Thank You crew, people on Patreon, and then the Chappies, you guys are fucking awesome. And I appreciate you so much. I need a fucking cigarette now. I'm all fucking cranky. All right, bitches, I'm back. How are you doing? So today, what we are going to be talking about is a subject that I have been kind of 
broaching, kind of leaning on the edge of, coming around and coming around to it and kind of just doing it a little bit and then not doing it very much. And that is risk. If there is any risk in art. And this keeps coming up because in the circles that I talk to, this is still a topic of conversation. And if you've been listening to the last few episodes of this podcast, you will remember that um, the guys on Slee Ricketts were talking about risk for a little bit. Um, Alice on Poetry Says was talking about risk for a little bit. And then I did like response episodes to their discussions about risk. But now I don't want to do any of that. And I just want to talk about what risk is and why it's important, even though a lot of people don't think there is any risk in art. And I don't understand that. One of the reasons why I don't understand how anyone can say that there's not risk in art is that people don't know what people are risking when they do stuff. Because that usually isn't something that just comes up. Like, a lot of artists out there are risking homelessness or risking not paying their bills. Um, And to some people, that might seem like a small risk, if a risk at all, whereas other people think that's a huge risk, okay? Now, an analogy that I like to go back to, and this is one I learned, like, fucking 23 years ago now is I heard back in the day when um, Britney Spears now you know that this is a fucking high class fucking poetry podcast when I'm going to give you an analogy with Britney Spears in it Um, it's almost as good as Happy Gilmore not quite but I understand Britney Spears when she would tour America she would go on tour or whatever, do her thing, go to town to town. But she would have her private jet fly back to California, Southern California, to get her favorite coffee and bring it to her wherever she was. Because her favorite coffee was from a place called um, the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf, which I thought was nationwide and maybe it is now and it wasn't back then. But um, she would fly in her coffee every morning, okay? Because that was her favorite coffee. Now, I will tell you that I don't really think their coffee, just straight coffee, is that great. But their um, ultimate blended drinks are fucking delicious. And if you ever have a cold or you feel one coming on, the Medicine Ball Tea at Coffee Bean is fucking delicious amazing and it'll fucking knock you right back into fucking being normal in no time it's really really good okay so moving right along so she would do this and there was a part of me that was just like this fucking bitch like how dare she fucking fly her private jet for just coffee Like, that's fucking ridiculous and all this other shit. And I was thinking about this and thinking about, like, what, like, a piece of shit she was for doing that and everything. And then I realized that the amount of money that it costs her to fly a private jet back to pick up her coffee and then fly it back to her is less of a percentage of her total income than it is for me to just go to Starbucks and get a cup of coffee. Do you understand what I'm saying? More of my income is spent driving down the street, going into Starbucks and buying like a $7 cup of coffee than it is for Britney Spears to fly a private jet to Coffee Bean and then to wherever the fuck she is. There is more risk in me getting that cup of coffee than it is for her, okay? So, because of how that sounds, this goes back to 
what is risky for one person may not be risky for somebody else. Okay, that's that's the analogy we're we're doing here. Okay, so that should fucking blow your mind. And so now you guys are all thinking like, oh my god, how much do I spend on coffee? And then there's one of you listening going, oh, all of these caffeine drinkers, I don't even drink coffee. Blah, 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 blah. Fuck you, dude. Fuck you. Okay. Jesus Christ. So going back to risk and what is risky and what's not. I don't know if you guys remember, but I told you a story a little while ago about a guy who was making um, chat books about um, some political shit going on where they live and distributing these chat books um, in like the city square where um, it is very not popular to have the opinions that this person has. And they um, put these out anonymously, okay? But the risk that this person put into their art to write this stuff and then publish this stuff and then put it out in a place where um, they can get a lot of shit for doing it. That is risk, okay? Um, There have been some people talking um, on some of the podcasts that I referred to earlier who were just saying stuff like, you know, there were times when I was writing and um, it came to a point where I had to decide, like, between, like, me and my spouse, like, if doing this is the right thing for me. Like, am I risking the end of my marriage because of my art? Am I risking putting my family in jeopardy because of my art? This is all risk. But again, the risk that that person is taking for their art might not be the same risk that a single person is taking for their art. Okay? So you cannot discount what risk is and what risk can do to an artist, if you understand what I'm saying. So, and then another thing that kind of brought this up to me was I was talking to somebody today, actually, and they were talking about how a lot of the poems they've been writing lately that have, they have a lot of racial themes to them. Okay. And I think that the poet in question has a very unique vantage point to be writing about this topic. And they, they're writing about it, but there is a part of them that feels like maybe they shouldn't go forward with it. Like there's like a little bit of hesitation there. Now, like I have said before, that hesitation, that is, that's the art. Okay, when you create something that you think for a minute, like, oh, shit, I don't know if I should put this out. That tells you how heavy that is. That tells you how important that is. And I know some of you are going to argue with me on this one. and I don't give a shit. Okay, when you feel that your art can stir emotions up so bad that there's a possibility that you can get canceled or something along those lines. To me, that's when you definitely put that artwork out. That's when you go as hard as you can because that stirring of emotion is what artists want to do to people all the time. Like that is the whole like goal in putting your work out is to create an emotional response, to create a visceral fucking reaction when someone ingests your art. You know what I'm saying? Now, what I'm not saying to do is to just do stuff to be a dick and put stuff out that you know is going to piss people off. That's not at all what I'm talking about. Because when you do that, your mindset's completely different. You're not feeling that hesitation. You're doing it for the response. But that hesitation you get, that like like kind of pinch inside that's like, oh, fuck, I don't know if I should do this. That is the art. That is the the thing that kind of like 
like the bing, like the light bulb over the head that shows you that you're going in the right direction. That yes, this is valuable. Yes, this is important. Yes, keep going. Like that is the push. Okay, because if fucking it was easy, everyone would fucking do it. Okay, what you have to do is learn how to take that hesitation and then realize what it is and then move forward and put your work out there. That's the difference. That's the difference, honestly, I think between, and I've talked about this before too, an artist and a creative person. The artist senses the danger from putting their stuff out and puts it out anyway. Whereas the creative person senses the danger and is like, oh, that's going in a drawer for 15 years, you know? That's the difference. But again, I don't want you guys to think that I'm telling you, like you have to like only do stuff like that. I'm just letting you know that when that flash happens inside of you, that you understand what it is. Um, but risk, again, is different for everybody. Everyone's situation is different. And in that way, risk cannot be quantifiable because everyone's life is so fucking different. Everyone's social standing is so fucking different. You know what I'm saying? So when people make blanket statements saying that there is no risk in art, to me that either says that they don't know what they're fucking talking about or they've never pushed themselves. That they've never been honest with themselves when they're creating. You know, but then again, me saying those two things are blanket statements. So I don't know what the fuck that means. You know, maybe there's some people who are so cut off from the world that nothing is risky to them, that there is absolutely no risk at all to anything that they could ever do. And if that was the case, like, fuck, life is boring as shit. Like, why the fuck would you fucking even want to live? Like, where's the fucking thrill? Where's the fun? What makes getting up worth doing? Just fucking sleep all day and do heroin for fuck's sake, dude. I don't know. Um, but again, like, this is me just talking here. Saying my piece. I guess if there was a way to kind of put a pin in this and just be able to walk away from this as a topic now. Is inside you, like the, the inside, knows how far you can go and how much you can say, okay? Guaranteed, if you listen to that voice, you will alienate your family, you will alienate your friends, and you will alienate people close to you who don't fall into those two categories, okay? Because that's just the nature of things. There's no way around it. So, you just have to decide what's more important, I guess, at that point. But all things pass, you know, like bad feelings, <laughs> bad fucking thoughts and shit like that. Like, especially in today's world, things happen so fast and there's so much media coming at you from so many different angles. I don't really know how certain things can stick to people nowadays. And I think, too, how you react to it when it does hit you, like if there is any backlash, how you respond is how that will stick to you. If you respond like fucking water on a duck's back, that's probably how long it'll stick to you. If you respond like you just got tarred and feathered, that's how long that's going to stick to you. Okay, so... I don't know. It, it's just, it's up to you how you fucking handle this shit. So anyway, um, I hope that was uplifting. Um, and hopefully it was. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. We'll find out. But so now let's get into the um, tasty, tasty butt plugs. Okay. So um, as far as um, what I've been doing on YouTube... Um, lately it has been the holidays came and I was trying to like take some time away, but I put a bunch of stuff up. And one of the things I did, if you have not seen it yet, 
um, is I did the 12 part um, MacArthur Park poem from my MacArthur Park book called Snapshots from MacArthur Park. And I did um, a reading of each part for the for 12 days. Um, and I called it the 12 days of MacArthur Parkmas, but I didn't coin that until like the fifth or sixth part because I didn't think it through. But um, so if you were curious of how that poem goes, you can go over and check that out and that'll be cool. Or you could just go to my Etsy shop and pick it up while I still have copies left. Oh, I talked about if it's okay to repeat lines. I talked about thinking less. And then what Poetic Anarchy is doing in the Anarchy crew. We were, uh, today I posted a video on upcycling. Um, upcycling your um, work into poetry and stuff like that. Okay, so for those of you who have joined my mailing list by going to IHateMountWall.com, um, I'm going to be, I think I mentioned this last time too, I'm going to be sending out the 2021 um, yearbook of poems and short stories to everybody. And then I'm going to be putting a new um, ebook up for um, new people who sign up to the website. And if you have signed up to that website, I will be sending you another email when that book is up. And I'll just give you the book there too. So you have that. Again, if you want to do mentorship with me, go over to IHateMountWall.com slash mentorship and you can see all the different things I can do for you there. And if you don't see exactly what you're thinking about, let me know what it is and I'll tell you if I could help you. And if I can't, I'll tell you to fuck off and go talk to somebody else. Um, Blood Rag issue six is out now. Issue seven should be out next week. I think next week that'll be done. Um, so there's that. Um, again, my chat books are available up on Etsy. My eBooks and paperbacks are up on Amazon. Um, including the Poetic Anarchy anthologies where you could get. My music is available wherever streaming music is streamed. And um, if you have any comments about anything I talked about or what risk is to you, please send me an email at ihateoutwall@gmail.com, and I will talk all about it when I do the episode that is all about comments and questions on January 20th. And I will have more information to this as it comes, but I'm going to be the... Um, featured poet at the um, Garage Poets open mic night on January 20th. So um, I will have more information as we get closer to that and where you can check them out and stuff and I'll have links and all that other fun good shit for you. So until next time, my friends, keep buying my books, do the right thing, type hard everybody, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.